بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته continuing with our journey of Umdat al-Fiqh of Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi rahimahu Allah ta'ala طيب, today we're going to take the chapter known as Bab, Bab Qadla al-Haja the chapter of uh, relieving oneself going to the bathroom manners answering the call of nature however you would like to translate it now this comes before the chapter of Wudu, why? Because it's imperative to remove the filth from oneself and to clean oneself before you make wudu. The Imam he says, "Yustahabu liman arada dhuul al-khala an yaqula bismillah." It's recommended for the one who enters the bathroom place where he's going to relieve himself to say bismillah. So he used the word "mustahab." What does "mustahab" mean? It means recommended. What does it mean technically? What's the definition of "mustahab" technically? If you do it, you're rewarded. Ma yuthab ala fa'lihi. If you do it, this action, you are rewarded. If you do not do it, you are not punished in any way, shape or form. What's another synonym for mustahab? Sunnah and for, for mustahab. So sunnah, mustahab and there's another word, mandub. Okay? Sunnah, mustahab, mandub, they all mean the same thing. So the imam, he said, if you want to enter the bathroom, you say bismillah. What is the benefit of saying bismillah before entering the bathroom? Ali radiyallahu anhu narrates as collected by Imam Tirmidhi that the Prophet sallallahu said Satru ma bayna a'yun al-jinn wa awrati bani adam idha dakhla ahadum al-khala an yaqula bismillah That the barrier between the eyes of the jinn and looking at your private area, your aura if one of you enters into the bathroom is to say bismillah So when you say bismillah, the barrier comes up between your private area and the eyes of those who would want to pry from amongst the jinn when do you say the basmala? The basmala, when do you say it? Before you enter it. Very good. So the scholars, they make tafsil. Tafsil means they give more detail and more explanation, okay? This word tafsil. They make tafsil and they say, they make tafsil and they say that if the place is a place which is a bathroom made for you to relieve yourself, then you say the basmala before you enter into the bathroom. But if it's a place which is not made for you to relieve yourself, like outside when you're camping or something of that effect, then when you say the basmala is when you come close to the ground or when you're about to lift your clothes up. In that sense you say it. At that time you say it. The Imam, he goes on and he says that after you've said the basmala, you say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الْخُبَثِ وَالْخَبَائِثِ I seek refuge in Allah from the khubathi and the khabaith. Khubathi with the dhamma means the male devils. Al khabaith is the female devils. But if you say khubathi with the sukun, you say khubathi, khubathi, you don't say khubu. You don't make it into a dhamma. Now, khubathi means evil, right? Khubathi now with the sukun means evil. And khabaith means the male and female devils. See the difference? So if you say khubuthi with the dhamma, it means the male devils. And khabaith is the female devils. If you say khubuthi with the sakun, it means evil, all types of evil. And khabaith means male and female devils. Okay? So it's a difference in meaning there. The imam, he continues and he says, مِنَ رِجْسِ النَّجِسِ الشَّيْطَانِ rajim." From the evil and the filth of the shaitan that has been cursed and removed from Allah's mercy, right? Some of the ulama, they say that this hadith is weak, such as Imam Nawi, others from amongst them, such as Imam Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, rahimullah ta'ala jami'an, they said, he said it's authentic. So there's a difference of opinion in the uh, hadith, in the dua, is it authentic or not authentic, right? This part of the dua, where he said, مِنَ رِجْسِ النَّجِسِ الشَّيْطَانِ rajim. Okay? And the word najis can be said with a fatha or a kasra. You can say najis or you can say nids. Okay? It can be said with the fatha or a kasra. And just generally many of the ulama, they say, look, when it comes to some of these ahadith, which you find in the chapter of, um, uh, of adab, right? Some uh, adhkar are weak. They said you could say them from time to time. It's not a problem. But the problem is if you say it continually. So even if there's a difference of opinion, don't get into a debate with somebody. It's okay to say it from time to time. It's not that strict an issue. The strict issue is if you continually say it. So in any case, the Imam, he said, And when he comes out of the bathroom or the place of relieving himself, he says, غفرانك. He says, oh Allah, جل, I seek your forgiveness. So why does the person say after going to the bathroom, I seek your forgiveness? Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, as one idea, as one opinion, he said, it's because you didn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So a part of your life went without you remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. So therefore you have to seek forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Tayyib. But others they say in reply to him, no. Who told you not to remember Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah himself told you through the Prophet ﷺ not to remember him. So the better thing is not to remember Allah in that situation. Others they said it's to it's because you are unable to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of removing this filth. You can imagine people, you're a doctor, right? No, not you? Oh, there was another one. You can imagine people who have that situation where Allah protect us, that they're unable to remove the filth from their bodies, what it does to them, the negative consequences and the hardship it causes them. So this blessing which is so huge and so, you know, so beneficial to us, that we are unable to thank Allah Azawajal truly for it. That's why you say Gufran. Like, that's why you seek Allah's mercy, having left the bathroom. Imam Ibn Qayyim, he makes a very good point. He says, as you've now thought about relieving yourself from the physical filth, you should now think about relie relieving yourself from the spiritual filth. Right? You relieved yourself from the physical filth, so now you should relieve yourself from the spiritual filth, which is done by making istighfar. Beautiful point of the Imam. So in any case, you carry on after saying what was said, Gufranak, and you say, Alhamdulillah alladhi adhaba anni al-adha wa'afani. Praise be to Allah Azawajal has, who has removed from me the harm, the filth, and he has left me in a state of good health. Again, as before, this part of the uh, dua, there is ikhtilaf and its authenticity. The Imam, he goes on and he says, وَيُقَدِّمُ رِجْلَهُ الْيُسْرَى فِي الدُّخُولِ وَالْيُمْنَى فِي الْخُرُوجِ and when the person enters into the place where he's going to relieve himself, he enters with his left foot and he leaves with his right foot. Imam Nawi and other scholars, they said that it is ijma that the left foot is used for that which is mafdula. Mafdula means that which is held in low regard. And the right is used for that which is fadila, that which is held in high regard. Mafdula, you use the left for that which is low regard. For dhila, that which is high regard, you use the right. And one of the proofs of this is in Bukhari, our mother, Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ يُعْجِبُهُ أَتَيَمُّنُ فِي تَنَعُلِهِ وَتَرُجُّلِهِ وَتُهُورِهِ وَفِي شَعْنِهِ كُلِّهِ She said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam used to like to use his right when he would uh, put on his shoes, do the right foot first, when he would comb his hair, he would do the right first. And in making purification, he would do the right first. And in all of his affairs, Aisha radiallahu anha said. And in the mustadrak of Imam al-Hakim uh, radiallahu anhu, Anas ibn Malik, he said, A sunnah idha dakhla ahadu kullu masjid an tabda bi rijlika al-yusra bil-yumna wa idha kharajta an tabda, an tabda bi rijlika al-yusra. Uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, the sunnah, if one of you enters into the masjid, which is a place which is fadila, a place which has high regard, then you should start with your right foot. And when you come out back into the world, which is mafdula, something which is in low regard, the dunya, then you start with your left foot. So this is in general a proof uh, for one of the reasons why the imam, he said that when you enter into the bathroom, you enter with your left foot. And when you leave, you enter with your exit with your right foot. Exactly. Tayyib, the Imam, he says, one point of benefit here, as we go into what the Imam says next. Uh, many of the scholars, they said there is a qaida, there is a rule. Not al qaida as we know them, a qaida, there is a rule. That, um, that rulings pertaining to the area of manners, adab in Islam, rulings pertaining to the areas of adab, like adab qada al haja, like the mannerisms pertaining to going to the bathroom, etc. If the Prophet ﷺ gave a command, it's to be taken as mustahab. And if the Prophet ﷺ gave a nahi, a, a, a forbidden, it's to be taken as makru, as disliked. Right? It's not to be taken as the Prophet's command, you have to do it. Rather, it's recommended. And the prohibition is not to be taken as haram, rather it's taken as disliked or severely disliked. So many scholars, they said this, and uh, this was mentioned by uh, Sheikh Abdullah uh, Abdul Salam al shawayr in his explanation of the book that we are studying, Umdut al Fiqh. And also, it was mentioned by Imam Abdul Bar, the famous Maliki scholar, in his book, Al Tamheed. So the Imam he says, Wala yadkuluhu bi shayin fihi ismun Allah ta'ala illa min hajatin. The person going into the bathroom, 
shouldn't go into the bathroom with anything that contains the name of Allah Azza wa Jal unless there is a real need to do so. Unless there is a real need to do so. So can I take the Quran into the bathroom? No, you can't, can you? But what if somebody's going to steal my Quran? Young boy, very good. Answer the question. You made him shy, Baba. I was going to ask him the second question. No problem. Tayyip. So very good. You cannot take anything into the bathroom which has the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the proof of this is uh, in Abi Dawood, it's narrated that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, arada an yadkhul al-khala, wada'a khatimahu. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he wanted to go into the uh, bathroom areas, the places to relieve himself, he would take off his ring. He would take off his ring. So what is the wajhud dalala? Wajhud dalala means what is the point of evidence? His ring used to have Muhammad, Rasulullah, the name of Muhammad and the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. So these are things that have ta'zeem. And Allah says in the Quran, And likewise, Allah says in the Quran, in, in Surah Al Hajj, um, magnifying the symbols of Islam is from the piety of the heart. So there's no way that you can want to take the name of Allah or the name of the Rasul or anything of that sort into a place which is lowly like the bathroom, etc. Even I've seen, I've, I've had the blessing of sitting with teachers when they teach Quran. The Sheikh, he gets upset, we're taking notes. So we put a paper on the Quran or even a pen, just rest it. That's all we did. He gets very upset. He says, I'm not telling you it's haram, but he's saying this is the word of Allah Azawajal. So look how the people of piety, they have ta'zeem of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in no way, shape or form can anything be taken into the bathroom. There is, there is discussion amongst ulama who say, for example, if your Quran is going to be stolen, you really feel that it's going to be stolen. You pray in a masjid where everybody is extreme Shia and they're all thieves and you feel that they're going to do something crazy. They might nick your Ahlu Sunnah uh, Mus'haf. Then in that case, you can take it in. But as for us, inshallah, we avoid such a situation. The Imam, he says, and the person when he's going to relieve himself he inclines towards his left foot or he puts his weight on his left foot or he, on his left side right now there's no authentic evidence for this statement but rather many have said that they found this to be beneficial for the person when he's trying to relieve himself so if the doctors doctors or people of medicine they say to you this is something good to do then go ahead and do it but if not then whatever you know sails your boat whatever is whatever is easy for you whatever is easy for you do that uh, Sheikh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala in his explanation of Zad al-Mustaqna Sharh al mumtah he gave a very nice ta'lil ta'lil means reasoning the ulama when they use this word ta'lil it means reasoning one of ta'lil the ta'lil that he gave he said this is takriman lil yumna it's out of respect for the right foot that when you're defecating or relieving yourself, you go more to the left and you leave alone the right. It's just a ta'lil that he gave. The Imam, he carries on and he says, And if the person is in an open space, he goes as far as he can and he conceals himself. He goes as far as he can and he conceals himself. It's narrated by Abu Dawood, uh, radiallahu anhu, the hadith, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا راد البراز انطلق حتى لا يراه أحد. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, when he wanted to relieve himself, he would go far away to such an extent that nobody would see him. Unlike what many of us have experienced growing up in countries in the West, for example, where people will openly relieve themselves in front of you on a Friday night or a Saturday night. It's crazy, yes, yeah, some of you are thinking, what on earth? But this is the kind of things that you find in some countries. Whereas Islam, this pristine religion, tells you to have shame, tells you to be bashful. And it's not something to be shame and to have bashfulness. Rather, it's something which is held in high esteem in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the Prophet Sallallahu the most complete and the most best of creation, was described as being more shy than that of a virgin. This was the description of the Prophet Sallallahu So the Prophet Sallallahu he would go far and he would make a sitr of himself. He would hide himself so what is the ruling of hiding yourself in fact one of the explainers of this book dr abdullah ibn muhammad in his course known as ta'seel al-fiqhi um, he says rather what is mustahab what is recommended is not that you just hide your aura rather what is the ruling of hiding your aura wajib right compulsory that's a must that's a given that's understood but what is recommended is that you hide the whole of you from head to toe 
all of you is hidden. That is what is recommended by the Imam and by the ulama of fiqh. That when you go to relieve yourself, the whole of you is hidden from the people. The Imam, he says, وَرْتَادَ مَوْدِئًا رَخْوًا And the person, the next statement the Imam, he says, وَرْتَادَ مَوْدِئًا رَخْوًا He looks for a place when he's going to reveal, uh, re re uh, relieve himself, a place that is soft, a ground that is soft. Why? Because if you're... Azakumullah, if you're urinating, it will come back on you, right? It will come back to you. And the Prophet وسلم, in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Ibn Abbas, anhu, is narrated Marra and Nabi وسلم, فقال, يعذبان, يعذبان كبير, كبير, أحدهما, The Prophet وسلم, is narrated that once he passed by two graves and he said, Verily, these two are being punished, and they're being punished for something which is not big. And then he said, rather it is big, meaning in its consequence. As for one of them, they never used to protect themselves from the drops of urine affecting their clothes. So it's a serious punishment. So it's something that we have to try our best to avoid when we go to the bathroom. So here the Imam, he says, you look for a mawdi, rakhwan. You look for a place which is rakhwan. Okay, soft. And just for those who like Arabic linguistics, rakhwan is one of those words which has tathleeth ar-ra. Tathleeth ar-ra means you can say it in three ways. You can say with the Dhamma, the Fatha, and the Khasra. You can say Rakhwan, Rukhwan, or Rikhwan. Okay? Rakhwan. So, the Imam, he says next, Wala yabulu fi thuqbin, wala shaqqin. And the person, it's recommended for him not to relieve himself in a place where there is a hole or a type of a crack in the ground. Why? Why do you think? What's the ta'aleel? What's the reasoning for not? urinating in the hole in the ground or a crack huh i can't hear you loud please a scorpion or something or a snake or something could pop out and harm you right so you've come close to the ground to relieve yourself may allah protect us it's not a good idea to do and also some of the ulama such as uh, imam abdul razak in his musannaf and uh, imam al bayhaqi Imam Abdul Razak in his Musannaf and Imam Al Hakim in his Mustadrak, they mentioned that Sa'd ibn Abada, radiallahu anhu, the great companion, he was in fact killed after urinating into one of the holes. And it was heard later on that the jinn they were making poetry, saying that we threw one of our arrows upon Sa'd and we didn't miss. Okay? So something which is serious to avoid urinating in those areas. Um, a side point. What is the situation about urinating, standing up? Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, she quotes, she mentions in the hadith in Tirmidhi, she said, Man haddathakum anna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yabulu qa'iman fala tusaddiquuhu ma kana yabulu illa qa'idan. Aisha, she said, whoever tells you that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would relieve himself standing up, then do not believe him. He would never relieve himself except for sitting. So this is the asl. The asal, the foundation of how we relieve ourselves is how do we stand or do we sit? We sit, ahsant, we sit, right? But there is another hadith in Bukhari, the hadith of Hudayfa, radiyallahu anhu, who said, Ata Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fabala qa'iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I saw him come to the rubbish dump of the people and he urinated standing up. So Aisha is saying there's no way the Prophet urinates standing up except for sitting. Hudayfa said, I see, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urinate standing up. Is there a way you can make jama? Jam means to unite between the narrations. Is there a way you can make jama between these two ahadith? Jam, you need to give a reasoning for it. Exactly, it was an impure place, so he couldn't come close to it. The closer he comes to it, the more uh, difficult it, it would have been for the Prophet So it was rather an exception to the rule, okay? That's how we can make jam between the two ahadith and this is one of the reasons uh, one of the uh, reasons that uh, Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shaqiti hafidhullah he gave in his explanation of uh, Tirmidhi the Imam he carries on and he says you cannot narrate and uh, ur urinate uh, in these situations where he says wala tariq wala dhil nafi' nor can you urinate in a path nor can you urinate in a place which is beneficial shade Okay, not in a path, nor in a place which is beneficial shade. And he says, وَلَا تَحْتَ شَجْرَةٍ مُثْمِرَةٍ Nor under a tree which, has, uh, which bears fruits. So three places, a path, beneficial shade, or um, 
a place where a tree bears fruits, right? What is this based on? It's based on the hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اتقوا اللعانين قالوا وما اللعانان يا رسول الله قال الذي يتخلى في طريق الناس أو في ذلهم The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, avoid the two that are cursed. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what is the two that are cursed? He said that one that relieves himself in the path of the people, okay? In the path of the people or under their shades. Why, is the, why are they cursed? You would curse them also, right? If you went to sit in a place and it's full of filth, you'd curse the people who cause that filth. So the Prophet ﷺ is avoiding us from getting that curse upon us by not falling into this action. What is the ruling here? The ulama, they said this is one of the exceptions. They said this is haram. Why? Because you're harming people. So obviously in no way, shape or form are you allowed to harm people. Okay? So urinating in their pathways or under their shades is harming the people. Therefore it becomes haram. But with regards to the place where the um, fruits drop or under trees which bear fruits, Imam Nawi in his book al Majmu. He said this is not given the ruling of haram because it's not definite that the fruit would be affected by the, uh, the filth. Okay, it's not definite that the fruit will fall, for example. So in that situation, we still say it's makru. The imam, he continues and he says, وَلَا يَسْتَقْبِلُ شَمْسًا وَلَا قَمَرًا And whilst urinating, it's, it's recommended or it's makru for you to face the direction of the sun or the moon. I've never understood what they meant by this. I've, I've, I've said so many explanations and texts and I just can't conceptualize it. They say, do not face the moon or the sun. Maybe they mean when the sun is coming down or I, I can't understand it. But anyway, they say, the Imam in those uh, uh, of this opinion, they say, do not face the moon or the direction of the sun. Why? What's the ta'leel? What's the reasoning? Takriman out of respect and honor for this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The majority, they say, no, it's allowed because in the hadith in Bukhari al-Muslim of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiyallahu anhu, he said, the Prophet sallallahu said, لا تستقبلوا القبلة ولا تستدبرها بغائط ولا بول ولكن شرقوا أو غربوا. The Prophet sallallahu said, do not face the qibla and do not turn around don't show your back to the Qibla when you are relieving yourself. Rather turn to the east or to the west. Turn to the left or turn to the right depending upon where you are. Meaning turn away from the Qibla, right? And obviously they said if you're going to turn to the east or the west, you're going to face the sun. So they said it's allowed, the majority said. But our Imam, he said it's not allowed. Okay, our Imam said it's not allowed. And what is the reasoning that I gave for our Imam and others saying it's not allowed to face the sun or the moon when we're leaving? Out of honor, right? Takriman. Out of honor. طيب, the Imam, he carries on and he says, وَلَا يَسْتَقْبِلُ الْقِبْلَ وَلَا يَسْتَدْبِرُهَا And when relieving yourself, you do not face the Qibla, nor you do, do you turn away from the Qibla due to the hadith which I just quoted, right? This is the ruling. And then he says, وَيُجُوزُ ذَلِكَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ But that is allowed to do so in a place which is a bunyan, in a building of some sort, a place which has a structure. It's allowed to do that in the building. Why? Because we have the hadith of the uh, Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he narrates, he says, رَقِيتُ يَوْمًا عَلَى بَيْتِ أُخْتِ حَفْسَ radiallahu anha. He said, one day I, cl I climbed upon the house of my sister Hafsa. فَرَأَيْتُ أَنَّ نَبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم قَائِدًا لِحَاجَتِهِ مُسْتَقْبِلَ الشَّامْ مُسْتَدْبِرَ الْقِبْلَ And I saw the Prophet ﷺ whilst I was on the roof, he was relieving himself and he was facing the lands of Sham and his back was towards the Qibla. So what has the Prophet ﷺ done here? He's done something which is going against what he commanded not to do. In the previous hadith of Abu Yulam al-Ansari, he said, don't face the Qibla, nor give it your back when you are relieving yourself, right? But our Imam and those who agree with him, they said it's allowed in a place which is a structure because of this hadith of Ibn Umar that he saw the Prophet ﷺ do it. Shaykh Abd Aziz al-Rajihi, and his explanation of this book, Umdut al-Fiqh, he said, Al-Qa'idah, he said the rule, or one of the rules in fiqh, he said, Ida naha an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an shayin, thumma fa'ala ma naha anhu. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbids to do something, then he goes ahead and does that which he had forbidden to do. Dalla ala an al-nahi laysa lit-tahreem. This shows that the nahi, the prohibition, was not for tahreem. It was not, it was not for the level of haram. Rather, it was for the level of makru. 
disliked or severely disliked, okay? So this is one of the ways we can understand why the Prophet ﷺ did it. Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ gives a command, but it's not to be understood that it's haram. Rather, it's severely disliked or disliked. So sometimes the Prophet will do opposite to show that it's allowed. Or it could be that he forgot the Prophet ﷺ was a human being. So the ulama, they give different reasons as to when they discuss this. In any case, our Imam, he said, it's allowed in the areas where there is a structure. The Imam, he carries on and he says, فَإِذَا قَطَعَ الْبَوْلْ مَسَهَ مِنْ أَصْلِ ذَكْرِهِ إِلَىٰ رَأْسِهِ ثُمَّ يَنْتُرُهُ ثَلَاثًا When you finish urinating, you should wipe your private part. What he means by wipe it is to do this. It's like you're trying to bring everything out of it. And once you've done that, then you should pull it three times. Okay? Again, there's no authentic narration for this. And in fact, some of the ulama, they said this is detrimental for you. It's detrimental for your private part for you to pull it or to wipe it in that nature. And also they said it's detrimental for your psychological state because you're going to start to have what's worse. You're going to start to be that person. Oh my God, is something still left? Did I wipe it enough? Did I pull it enough? And that's going to cause you two problems physically and mentally, right? So they say, no, rather what you do is you leave it. Like Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, it's natural. Once you finish urinating, that's the end of your urine. It's, it's done. It's, Allah Azza is giving you that natural ability. And in fact, they say, as mentioned by Imam Ibn Majah, he collected a hadith where he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi The Prophet Sallallahu made wudu and then he made nadaha of his private part. What's nadaha? When you sprinkle water, a handful of water, right? The Prophet Sallallahu would sprinkle his private part and he would sprinkle the clothing. What's the benefit of that? It protects your mind, right? You know, the shaitan won't be able to come to you and give you doubts. So, so that's the sunnah to do, is after you finish urine, you sprinkle your private area and the clothing with water, okay? Not with the, the, the hose, right? You want to go back into the office looking like that. Just sprinkle yourself and that will save you from having any doubts in any way, shape or form. The imam, he carries on and he says, وَلَا يَمَسُّ ذَكْرَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ وَلَا يَتَمَسَّحْ وَلَا يَتَمَسَّحُ بِهَا the, the person who's relieving himself shouldn't touch his private part with his right hand, nor should he clean himself with his right hand. Because we have the hadith of Abi Qutada, radiallahu anhu, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يمسكن أحدكم ذكره بيمينه That none of you, وهو يبول, that none of you should uh, hold his private part with his right hand whilst he's urinating. Okay? وَلَا يَتَمَسَّحْ مِنَ الْخَلَاءِ بِيَمِينِهِ Nor should he clean himself from the bathroom with his right hand. وَلَا يَتَنَفَّسْ فِي الْإِنَاءِ And nor should he blow into a container, which is the end of the hadith. So the hadith is clearly telling us that whilst in the state of cleaning oneself or defecating, you cannot use the right hand. Thus, how does somebody clean himself? Hold it with your left and the thing that you're going to clean with? Water is good, it's the easiest way, right? But if you want to use a tissue or a stone, you hold it in your right hand, okay? That's the way that you do it. But you don't use your right hand to clean. You would move with your left hand. Your right hand remains in place. You would move with your left hand. Again, mentioned by Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar and Sheikh Iti and others in the explanation of this book. book. The Imam, he says, ثُمَّ يَسْتَجْمِرُوا وِتْرًا We've nearly finished. ثُمَّ يَسْتَجْمِرُوا وِتْرًا Then you make istijmar وِتْرًا Istijmar is from Jamar, which means small stones. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, If one of you makes istijmar, meaning cleaning himself with the small stones, then he should finish on witr. Three, five, seven. If you go beyond seven, something wrong with you, right? <laughs> Three, five, seven. Uh, stop on witr. And then the Imam he says, ثُمَّ يَسْتَنْجُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَنْجِ بالماء. And then he should use water. Okay? after having done that. But if he doesn't use water and just does istijmar, meaning he just uses the stones or tissues or something of that type to clean himself, then that suffices. It's not a must to use water. But the author, he did recommend to use water, right? And this is what the ulama, they say it's recommended to use water. In Surah Tawbah, you have the ayah where it says, فِيهِ رِجَالٌ يُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَتَطَهَّرُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُطَهِّرِينَ in there are men who love to purify themselves. And Allah loves those who purify themselves. Now the ulama of tafsir, they say that this was revealed uh, about a group of the Ansar, the people of Quba. And when it was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ sent out some people to go and ask them, what is it that Allah has commended you for in the Quran? What do you do? 
that you love to purify yourselves. They said none of us leaves uh, the bathroom except that we use water after having done so. This is the thing that we do and that was the thing that Allah loved them for and, and commended them for. This hadith as mentioned by Sheikh Abd Aziz uh, al Jibreen in his explanation of Umdat al-Fiqh, not the Alama al Jibreen who passed away. People confuse the two authors. This is Sheikh Abd Aziz al Jibreen who is still alive. In his explanation of the book, he said this hadith is qareeb, qareeb il al hasan meaning it's very close to being at the high level of authenticity. And all other hadith which talk about this issue are da'if, okay? So the Imam, he says you should use water. Now, if there is a, um, it's recommended to use water, but you're allowed to use, we said the Imam said, you're allowed to use only stones or tissues or something to that and not use water. What does this show us? It shows us that if there's a trace left after having cleaned yourself, by using tissues or stones, then the trace is overlooked. Because had the trace not been overlooked, water would have been obligatory for you to use. So in some parts of the world, you may not have water. You've cleaned yourself from the bathroom, but you find there's still a trace left. Don't worry about the trace. It's, not, it's overlooked in the, in the Sharia of Allah Azza wa Jal. Tayyib. Uh, the Imam, he says, وَإِنَّمَا يُجْزِيُ الْإِسْتِجْمَارِ إِذَا لَمْ تَتَعَدَّ النَّجَاسَ مَوْضِعُ الْحَاجَةَ and verily, istijmar is acceptable. Istijmar meaning using the stones. Istijmar is acceptable if the defecation didn't go beyond the norm. If it went beyond the norm, somebody was sick. I don't want to describe it. It went beyond the norm. Somebody was sick. And in that case, you, of course, have to use uh, water. And it doesn't suffice just to use um, the istijmar. The Imam, he says, وَلَا يُجْزِئْ أَقَلْ مِنْ ثَلَاثَ مَسَحَاتْ مُنْقِيَ it's not allowed to use less than three wipings which clean. Okay? Three is the, is the bare minimum of wipings according to the Imam and those who agree with him. In Sahih Muslim, we have the hadith of Salman al-Farsi, radiyallahu anhu, where he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nahana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an nastanjiya, an nastaqbil al-qibla li ghaitin aw li bawlin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us from facing the qibla to relieve ourselves. Okay? Or that we make istinja, cleaning yourself, with less than three stones. He also forbade us from using the right hand. Or that we use dried animal dung, or that we use bones. Okay? So these are the things that the uh, Salman al farsi mentioned as being prohibited by the Prophet. And our, our um, point, our shahid from the hadith, was that less than three times? And the Imam he goes on and he says, وَيَجُوزُ الْإِسْتِجْمَارِ بِكُلِّ طَاهِرٍ يُنْقِي الْمَحَلِ And it's allowed for you to make istijmar, the cleaning, uh, with everything which is munqi lil mahal, which is pure, and it will clean the place. Is foil pure? Yes. Can you use it for making istijmar? Yes, according to what I said, but think a bit. No, because it's not munqi. Munqi means it's not. It has to be cleansing. Foil will just make the issue worse, right? Glass will make the issue worse. So whatever you use has to be munqi, meaning that it has to clean. It has to be beneficial for cleaning. The Imam, he says, He said, you can use everything which is pure, which will clean the place. Then he said, except for roth. Roth is animal dung, right? Dried animal dung. You cannot use that. Nor can you use that which has hurma, that which has sanctity. Sanctity, like food, it has value. Uh, books of knowledge, you cannot, okay, I've got an extra copy of this book, I'll rip some paper out. No, you cannot do stuff like that, okay? So this Imam, he says this is not allowed. And with regards to um, using roth and idham, uh, using dried animal dung and bones, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith that this cannot be used. فَإِنَّهُ زَادْ إِخْوَانِكُمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ For verily it is provision for your brothers from amongst the jinn. Their animals benefit as food from the dried animal dung, and for them, the bones, they find food on that. So you shouldn't use that for cleaning yourself. And the Imam, at the end of it, he said, Wallahu a'lam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this is such a beautiful statement of the Imam. He's from the Imams of Ahl Sunnah. He's from those who are known as being mountains of Iman and Taqwa and knowledge. And he also made jihad with um, 
Salahuddin al Ayyubi. Not only does he have knowledge, he has the virtue of jihad. But look what he says. He said, Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best. And this is what knowledge is supposed to do to us. It's supposed to humble us. It's supposed to make us realize that what we're learning, what we've come to know, what it does for us, it shows us how much we don't know. It's not like, okay, we learned something and now I know everything. No, it's the complete opposite. I've now learned that I don't know. I know that I have to be quiet, I have to keep learning, I have to be humble. Okay? We shouldn't be like those people who love to show, I know this, I know that. SubhanAllah, this Imam is saying Allah knows best. He's having that humility. So knowledge should make us have humility that we say Allah knows best. I don't know, you know better than me. Okay? It's easy for us to say that. I don't know and you know better than me. In any case, uh, that was the end of that chapter. And just to add that the ulama, they also said that when you're relieving, you should avoid speaking in the bathroom. Okay? You shouldn't be having a conversation on the phone or with anybody else next to you in the cubicle. Uh, nor should you spend time in the bathroom longer than you need to spend. So if you're reading a magazine and you find that the article is interesting, just leave it for later. Tayyib wa sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Meaning you shouldn't spend more time in the, in the bathroom longer than you should. And uh, anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask. If not, may Allah make it heavy in your scale of good deeds. Ameen.